he's the king of kings, if he's the Lord of lords, is he really the I am God? I declare that today that he's alpha and omega. I choose to bless the Lord. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Do you not know that your praise is not predicated on what you're going through? Your praise is not predicated on somebody else, what they did to you, but your praise is predicated on what Jesus Christ of Nazareth did for you. Do you have a worship down in your belly today? I woke up this morning blessing the Lord. I woke up this morning esteeming him high. I woke up this morning bowing down to him. Come on, if you just love him, just bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within him. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I don't need a primer. I don't need a pumper, but I came to exalt the Lord today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Is your praise enough? For, for the Lord to come in glory to God Psalms 104 says that we ought to enter hallelujah when you walk, walked in this building you should have did two things you should have entered into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and then the scripture goes on to say be thankful unto him and bless his name why are we blessing his name for the Lord is good can you turn to somebody and say the Lord is good. I don't know about you, but the Lord's been good to me. I don't know about you, but the Lord been good to me. He woke me up this morning. The old folk used to say, he woke me up this morning. Jack, and now I understand. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we adore you. Come on. Come on and adore the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna mess around and we gonna be benedicting Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Come on, let's worship. He's worthy. Come on, let's bow down. He's worthy to receive glory. He's worthy to receive praise. We didn't come to entertain you tonight or this morning, but we came to laudate the Lord. Can you do like they did in scripture of oh, they sat the Lord on an ass coat, the scripture declare, and they began to lay down palm trees or palm leaves and their garments and it says that they gave him a triumphant entry can we give the king of kings the lord of lords the i am god the alpha and the omega the beginning and the ending can we give him a triumphant entry into my day into my life into my mind into my body god you're able you're faithful there's none like you he's the kinsman redeemer come on say some things to the Lord. Tell the Lord how good he's been. Tell the Lord how merciful he's been. This I recall to my mind. Lamentations 321 and therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies. How many can say it's because of the Lord's mercies. I don't know about you. You better insert your name. It's because of the Lord's mercies that Anita L. Brown has not been consumed. I don't know about you but the devil has been after me he's after your peace he's after your joy he's after your health he's after your wealth that's why I can stand today and I will bless the Lord I bless him in good times I bless him in bad times I bless him when I'm up I bless him when I'm down I bless him when I'm full and I bless him when I'm empty I bless him when I'm sick and I bless him when I'm well hallelujah Jesus my praise is not predicated on what God did for me but what he's gonna continue to do how many of you know that the word of God is true he's the same yesterday today and forever your husband will change your wife will change your job will change hallelujah the system will change uncle sam will change our finances will change the world is ever evolving the world is changing things that were so yesterday ain't so today but one thing today we can stand fast and say that 
God changes not. He's the only one that we can depend on. He's the only one that I can trust in. The scripture declare in 1 John 5, 14, that this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he said that he would do it. So we thank you today. Hallelujah. All we got to do is ask. It shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the doors will be open. How many of you are knocking this morning? I don't know about you, but I want my doors to be open. I want it to be an open heaven. According to Revelations, there is an open heaven. I decree and declare there's an open heaven over my family, over my children, over my health, over my wealth, over my grandchildren, over my job, over where I live. I decree it and declare it. You can have just what you want, what you speak out of your mouth, what you say out of your heart. We can have it in the name of Jesus. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, I choose to worship. Thank you, Lord. I choose to worship. How many of you say I choose to worship? I choose to worship. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it. The scripture declared that I was glad. How many of you can say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Nobody should have came here today mad. Nobody should have came here today despondent. Nobody should have came here today not knowing that God is going to do some things for you do you not know that the scripture says in Ephesians 3 20 that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly that's the kind of God we serve hallelujah see our bosses and our jobs they pay us for what we work but the scripture declares that he's going to do exceedingly lady men see and abundantly above all see what's happening with y'all y'all not y'all don't have enough thinking you're not thinking above all that you can ask. You're thinking too low. You're praying too low. You're praying for your rent. You're praying for food, clothing, and shelter. But when I peeped at the scriptures in Matthew 6 33, that if I would seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things going to be added. So stop paying for your rent. Stop paying for praying that your light bill be paid. All you got to do is live right. And he promise to do these things for you so now when you want the gates of heaven to open up then that means that in order for the Lord to do the exceedingly you got to start thinking a little bigger than your rent a little bigger than your house note a little bigger than a pair of new shoes you can work overtime and get that hallelujah Jesus but I want ministry to be the forefront I want to go win the lost. I want to go preach the gospel. Hallelujah to the poor. I want to go feed some people. I want a building that'll house hundreds and thousands. We got to elevate our thinking. Hallelujah. We got to think about kingdom. Past what I got on. Hallelujah. My clothes is irrelevant when it comes to the things of God. We got to elevate for God to do the exceedingly. What are you thinking about? You're wondering why all you're getting is your rent paid. Well, what you're thinking about? What you're praying about? All the Lord is doing is giving me a little chump change. What you're thinking about? What you're praying about? Oh, God. But when you're driving something that your FICO score said you couldn't, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're living somewhere uh, that your FICA score uh, said you could not have. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, we thank you uh, when the gates are open wide uh, for you. Uh, that means that you've elevated your thinking to kingdom. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Come on, go hug somebody. Oh, bless Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Come on, go hug somebody. Oh, we bless God this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and make your boast in the Lord. We bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Why y'all are hugging and loving. I thank God for Pastor Mincy giving me an opportunity in his house this morning. Bless his. Bless him today in his absence. I bless Pastor Anthony Mincy Sr. Bless Lady Jackie Mincy and you who have came to, to hear 
what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's word time. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all. I love the word. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. I think I've already prayed. I think I've already um, did my introductions. I thank God for my pastor, Pastor Shaman Scales and Pastor Brittany Scales of Empire, uh, Inspire, excuse me, Church of Jacksonville. We are growing ministry. We are ministry of deliverance. I don't know about you that when we have service, I just believe, especially in crucial times like these, uh, that the five-fold ministry should be in operation in absolutely every one of our services. Uh, so he already told us in his word all of us don't have each gift but I come to tell you that in the sanctuary the fivefold ministry should be in operation so it should never be a time that we have a service that deliverance don't take place it should never be a service that salvation don't take place it should never be a service that the prophetic should not take place it should never be a service that God does not move through his word hallelujah we bless God today thank you Jesus Jesus. So therefore, hallelujah, what am I going to teach on today? I tell you, I just love the word. And I'm thankful for coming out of a ministry that we were taught that if you study not to preach, but if you study to live, you can simply preach your life. Hallelujah. So I ain't getting scriptures and definitions uh, to try to stack the deck on you. Uh, I'm getting scriptures so I, uh, like David, declare I want the word of God to be a light and a lamp. Uh, I want the word to be stitched and embroidered in my heart that I might not sin against him. I want the word to be a mirror so I can know what does what do I need to do to make it in. See, we're, pre we're studying for the wrong reasons. So we're studying so we can stack the deck so I can get them right and get them straight. No, every time I open up my Bible, when I, I'm loving on the word, I'm weeping, Pastor uh, Lady Jackie. I'm weeping while I'm reading the word because I'll be like, ooh, ooh, this is some good stuff. Ooh, it's like honey hallelujah, in my belly. I'm loving the word. Hallelujah. And if you don't love the word like that, say, Lord God, I want to love your word. Hallelujah. Because the reason why some of us don't love the word like that because we're studying for the wrong reason. We're studying on how to tell somebody else how to live right and how they draw can be full. Hallelujah. But I'm studying the word of God because I recognize that the devil in John 10, 10, he's coming to do three things. The devil don't like you. Oh, he gonna invite you to the party. Oh, he gonna influence you and make you do those things. But the devil's ultimate goal is to do three things. That is to kill you, to steal you and to destroy you that's the only motive that the devil have oh he gonna paint it nice and pretty nice and shiny he gonna send him nice and handsome you know what I heard over this weekend the devil ain't finna send you nothing that you don't like I'm transparent the devil ain't finna send me no short dude I'm sorry if you short but I don't like short men so why would the devil send me a short man the devil ain't finna send me that but he'll send me some tall dark and handsome got muscles that are you know, rolling off that's my temptation and likewise for you I ain't never been in a nightclub in my life so the devil ain't finna tempt me with a nightclub life I ain't never been high in my life so the devil not gonna tempt me with getting high I ain't never been drunk in my life so the devil not gonna tempt me with alcoholic beverage where I can be intoxicated he's only gonna tempt me with the things that I like He's only going to tempt me with the things that I pant for and I thirst for and I long for. So that's where my fight come in at. My fight come in, my temper, my attitude. Before I got saved, I'll cuss you out and wouldn't think nothing of it. I know I'm all cute and prim and proper and I all got my makeup on today, got my little stuff on. And y'all can say, not nah, Pastor Nita. She don't look like she'll tear somebody off. Okay. you out like a sailor nasty mouth but I thank God hallelujah nothing was safe with me 
I steal something out of your pocketbook. Don't leave your purse with me. Don't leave your stuff with me. I was a thief. I would go in them people's store and steal and come out. You would think I bought all that stuff. But thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Now that was, that's my story. But you got a story. So we like to jump when somebody else tells us their story. You got a story too. My, my reason is that I ain't ashamed to tell it. And the reason why I'm not ashamed to tell it, because I refuse to allow the devil to stifle my praise. I'm going to tell on myself because I'm, I'm going to expose the enemy. That's why the people are not getting healed and delivered, because we're not exposing the enemy. It's, I don't want you to necessarily know all the bad things that I've done. No, but I want you to know because some of the things that we've gone through, you going through, you struggling through, and you saying, oh, my God, the devil tripped me up. Give you a prime example. I did study, y'all. Oh, I studied. Got some good old juicy stuff right here. But I'm going to shift for a few moments because the devil's job, like I said, John 10 and 10, is to kill you, to steal you, and to destroy you. The devil brings guilt, shame, blame. He brings bondage. He brings, um, he brings us uh, things that cause us to shun ourselves from the believer. Do you know that when the saints or when anybody fall, you know, the first thing that they do, they stop coming to church. Why they stop coming to church? Because they're in an auxiliary or they sing or they on the praise team or you know what? Sometimes they're our leaders. But how many of you know, we, when, 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 if you cut me, I bleed. I'm not an android. Yes, I got an anointing on my life. Yes, I might be the pastor. Yes, I might be the prophet. Yes, I might be the bishop or the pope. But sometimes the enemy wants us. The Bible says like this, and the Lord gave me this scripture when I was really, really going through years ago, and he was talking about Simon Peter, but, uh, but uh, Lady Jackie, uh, the scripture was saying, Simon, Simon, the devil desires to have you and to sift you as wheat. The, uh, the ultimate thing, the devil want to sift you as wheat. He want to take our testimony. He want to take our peace. He want to take our joy. But when we expose the enemy, see if I was at the nightclub last night drinking, getting high and all those things and I stand up this morning and I say, you know what, y'all? I recognize that I, was, I ain't did them things. But I was recognized that I'm wrong and I'm exposing. See, I don't need nobody to accidentally, accidentally like they're doing in the world now. They're accidentally shooting footage on people, accidentally putting it on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Oops, I didn't know that I hit the sin button. Yes, you did. And so now the world is trying to um, take back some things that somebody shot a video of me. But when I stand before you and say, this is what I did, not only am I cleansing me, I'm giving the Lord an opportunity to cleanse you. I'm giving the devil a black eye and say, you know what? You take that devil because you thought you had something on me because repentance heals. True repentance cleans. True repentance mends your brokenness. So when I tell on myself, you ain't got nothing to tell on me about because I already done told on myself. Therefore, when the praise music start, when the shout music start, and you see me up here shouting, and you see me up here praising God, you can't say, look at her with a hypocritical self. She up here praising and dancing. No, 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 don't, don't get it twisted. I done already told you where I was wrong. I done already told you that the devil had a, a stronghold on me, but I broke it. Hallelujah. I came to tell you that if you're wrapped up, tangled up, all of that, that the old people used to say, I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in sin. I come to tell you that all you got to do is be honest with yourself. What they tell you when you an alcoholics anonymous, sex anonymous, whatever the addiction, gambling or not anonymous, drinking anonymous. They say that the first thing that you have to do before you get delivered, you got to come to grips with it. And what they do, they tell you to stand before a crowd of people and they say, um, uh, hello. And y'all say, hello and they say hi my name is Anita y'all say hi Anita and you raise your hand and then you say something like I'm an alcoholic 
But all the world can do is identify with who you are. But Jesus is the only one that can purge your conscious mind. See, after a year of going through that program, the only thing that they can give me, don't get me wrong, I ain't downplaying the medallion because that's a milestone if you got a medallion because you haven't drank or smoked or cussed or gambled or you know watched pornography. That's a milestone. But the therapy, they always got you saying, I'm always that. So that in the back of their mind, at midnight when they're going through and they get an itch to gamble, they're trying to find their sponsor. But what if your sponsor don't answer at midnight? So now you're in a quandary. Now you're sitting there, standing there in your car, trying to get in the club, go to uh, one of the brothels, and now you got a thing going on as to what to do. Why? Because you couldn't get in touch with your sponsor. Because they kept telling you, oh yeah, you're free, but you're still that because that's all they rehearsed in your mind. That once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Hallelujah. But that's not what the Bible tells us when we're born again. Hallelujah. He says to us that once the Lord has set me free, he says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He told me that once I'm saved, that I have, he has freed me from the wrath to come. I'm freed from sin. I, I, don't, I no longer, the Bible says that there is now no condemnation to them that walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that means that in order for me to keep my victory, in order for me to keep my deliverance, there's a prerequisite that I have to do. I can't, I can't walk after my flesh. I got to walk after the spirit. The scripture lets us know, hallelujah, that God did not come to give us periods of peace. He said that if I keep my mind, my mind, my medulla oblongata, my parietal and my occipital, my limbic system, hallelujah, my zygomatic process, my cerebral cortex, my cerebellum, all of that, my pons, my midbrain, all of that, my hypothalamus, if I keep this thing right here stayed on the Lord, he going to keep me in peace. There's nowhere in that scripture that says that he's going to give me periods of peace. He said that he'll keep me in peace. So not saying that every now and then, you know what David said, that my foot, what, had not slipped. But some kind of way, I had to do a matrix and I had to say, hold up there, girl. You better remember who you are. Birds of a feather do flock together. So you better get you a home, girl, or get you a BFF that's going to say, girl, now you know better. You better get yourself out of that. Get yourself out of that. Because the devil is coming to kill you, to rob you of your peace. You know what? The devil care not that I'm up here preaching. He don't care if I'm praise dancing. He don't care if I got all of my phylacteries. He don't care about none of that. And if, if you could really hear the enemy, he said, y'all come on to church. Y'all come on to church and do all of that. Just don't believe what you're saying. Just don't believe what you're preaching. Just don't get it. When we finally get it, when you wake up in the morning, the devil like, oh, Lord, you a terror to the enemy. If you're not a terror to the enemy, there's something wrong with that. If you don't feel uncomfortable when you sin, there's something wrong with that. If your Satan, the Lord, rebuke you ain't working no more, you ain't used it in a while. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're not in his presence on a regular basis, because the scripture says that in his presence, in his presence there's fullness. I said all that to say, Hallelujah. Many of you have lost a loved one, a sister, a brother, a husband, a wife, a child, a BFF, a church family member, or a co-worker. And I was sharing this with somebody on yesterday because I lost my husband several years ago. But this is what this is the testimony, Lady Mitzi, that I told her. I said through 
three years have passed by and not, I think, I don't know whether I shared that with you, but I have not grieved 24 hours yet. I have not been sad 24 hours yet. Oh, don't get me wrong, I've cried. I've done some things, I've been depressed, but not, nothing 24 hours. You know why? Because I'm mindful that the words say that he'll keep me in perfect peace, yet my mind is stayed on him. Because, because the devil is out. The devil is out to steal you. The devil is out trying to take your peace. He's trying to take your joy. So we got to be like those four lepers that say, you know what? You got leprosy. I got leprosy. So why sit ye here and die? I refuse to die in this state. So I'm going to walk on a little further because by chance, by, my, by me exercising my faith, God just might do some things in my life. So the devil is coming when you're standing still, when you're stunted, hallelujah, and when you're confused and when you're discombobulated and when you don't know which way to turn. But I stopped by here today to tell you, push forward. Keep going. Don't let the enemy see you sweat. Keep on pushing. Keep on trusting. Keep on trying. And keep on believing God. Hallelujah. So I'm just gonna give you a gist Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promise. You know what? I don't know why preachers say this. I just think we, we learned this in preacher school. I ain't going to be before you long. That just sound cute to say. I ain't going to be before you long. And then we say, but well, I'm going to be here long enough. But I'm truly not going to be here before you long. But I begin to um, ask the Lord, Lord, what can I teach on? And so I think the point that I was getting ready to make, a friend of mine saw me, a nurse friend of mine saw me like three days ago. And soon as she saw me, she began to say, oh, Miss Anita, every time... Every time I see you, you make me cry. Every time I see you, oh my God, the anointing of God repel you. And one thing I do know, I said, well, I'm just anointed for that. I'm, I'm, I know I'm an exalter. I know if you don't know, if you still been saved three, four, five years and you don't know your gift, you need to pray and say, Lord God, what am I good for? What did you put me here for? Am I an exalter? Am I a pusher? Am I a motivator? Am I an encourager? What am I? Because you ought to be changing lives in your own lane. Aren't you glad that each one of us got a different blueprint, a different RNA, a different DNA? I'm so glad that there's only one Anita. Aren't y'all glad? And Jackie probably say, thank you, Jesus. There's only one Anita Brown. Bless God. And you can insert your name. There's only one of you. Bishop Trey said on Friday night, I can only be the best me that I can be. I can't be nobody else. Yeah, I can sit up here and growl and do all of that. But one of my daughters said, Mama, you, ain't all that. you, you don't do all of that when you minister. Just flow the way you flow. Just flow the way you flow. If you, if you don't stand on the table, I'm going to stand on. Why should I stand on the table trying to impress you and fall? I can only be because I guarantee you that if you allow me to be me and normally when I get up to minister this is the thing that I normally say you know I ain't got you know a lot of women in here this morning but sometimes when you have women in the sanctuary sometimes they hate on you a little bit they hate on you because you got your sister locks all curled and your lashes and your eyelashes all done and your makeup done and you look pretty good. So sometimes when I'm at a women's event, this is what I say. I say, um, ladies, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Anita show sure look cute today. And then I say, turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, Miss Anita sure got it going on today. You know why? I knew how I looked when I got dressed this morning. But then if anybody know me, as cute as I am, hallelujah, as sexy and fine as I think I am, I'm a worshiper. say you even worship cute you even worship prissy and when and when you get hands laid on you you even fall cute 
I say, don't hate me because I ain't running all over the church and hucking and bucking the way you do. Don't hate me. But one thing about my worship, my worship is for real. As dainty and as prissy and as cute as I think I am, I love the presence of the Lord. I love being in his presence. There's no place that I'd rather be Hallelujah, than in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And when there's no place that you'd rather be, it doesn't matter about anything else. Hallelujah. I might not jump and run and shout like somebody else, but as long as Jesus is reading this heart of mine, long as I'm worshiping, long as I'm telling the Lord thank you, long as, as I'm giving the Lord my best praise, long as I'm todoing and shabakin and tahilahin and barakin, hallelujah, long as I'm giving God my best praise, hallelujah. You know what? We, I don't need no music, hallelujah, because I can shout right now. Why? Because when I think about all the things that the Lord has done for me, hallelujah, I can say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My soul make her burst in the Lord. I can shout right here, hallelujah, all the things that the Lord has brought me from. I can bless God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My soul make her boast in the Lord. That's how I normally would open up to let y'all know, yes, I'm cute and prissy and all of that. Hallelujah. But when it comes to a soul being saved and brought into the kingdom, I'll take these pumps off. I'll take these lashes off. Anything that's going to interfere with that person getting filled with the Holy Ghost. See, I'm going to see one thing about me. I'm going to walk. I'm going to always walk in cute. Always. I'm going to always walk in cute. But if I left in the same capacity, if a little bit of mascara, my lipstick still on, sometimes I've left church one eyelash on, one eyelash off. Hallelujah, Jesus. Half of my, 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 my eyebrow done wiped off. You know why? Because it matters not. I want to walk in cute, but I don't want to leave cute. I don't want to leave cute because I want the Lord to know, Father, fall fresh on me. I want the Lord to fall fresh on me. Huh? I want to change. See what we do? We have gotten um, kind of um, used to the praise team ushering us into the presence of the Lord. And then when they don't do what we want done, we was like, your praise team was all right. But your worship is your worship. So you want the praise team to take you into a place that you're not even familiar with. Because if they took you there, you wouldn't even know it. Why? Because you don't have a relationship with God. But when you got a relationship with God, it don't matter what they sing. Hallelujah. It don't matter whether it's a fast song, a slow song, one of your favorite songs, one of the old-fashioned songs that mom and them used to sing. All you want to do is get to Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 2 say, why should I look to Jesus? Because he's the author and he's the finisher of my faith. Pastor Callahan used to always say, I'm going to tell y'all how y'all can get the victory. You need to find a promise in the scripture for your problem. And the reason why, how I've learned scripture, because when problems arise, I'm searching the book, trying to find a promise for my malady. Oh, I might take some medicine. Oh, I might take the prescription. I might even take some antibiotics. I'll go to the doctor and I'll take the, the IV or whatever they give me. But trust me, I'm going to believe God through my process. So I say, take the medicine. Do the treatment. But believe God. Because the, the, the doctors can only tell you what they, you know, what their learning told them. But you got to believe God for yourself. And I tell this story. My daughter's husband had, and I can say, had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He went through the treatment. He had to go to Mayo and be quarantined so he can get all of his treatment and all of that. So in order for us to get the treatment, sometimes it kills our good cells. 
So yeah, we're pumping, you know, it's killing the, the, the bad cells, but it's also killing the good cells. So now my daughter wants to get pregnant. And so this is what the doctor told her. The doctor says, oh, I'm so sorry um, that the, the medication, you know, uh, the sperm is no longer viral, uh, uh, vital or potent anymore. So the doctor says this to my daughter. He says, if you and your husband get pregnant, it'll be a 2% chance medically that is so now my daughter is distraught upset don't know what to do oh my god crying mama we want us another baby so what did we begin to do the intercessor say you know what okay so what so we say what the doctor said again now? he said that if we get pregnant it's a two percent chance that i get pregnant i say oh, okay so as long as we in the percentage, that's an opportunity for God to work his word. So we are remembering what the word of God declare. At the time my husband was alive, every morning we begin to pray. We begin to decree and we begin to declare, you know. And so my husband would do his thing in prayer. And so my husband know I'm a nurse. He said, Nita, I already know how you're getting ready to pray, girl. I already know what you're getting ready to do. So he would say, Father, you know, heal, heal them. Let them get pregnant. Let them, you know, get a union and all of that. Now he would say, all right, Nita, do your thing, girl. So now I'm praying, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would touch the cervix. I ask that you would touch the fallopian tubes. And I ask that you would touch, you know, all of that, the, the, the testes, all of the things that work around it do it Jesus let the egg fertilize it in Jesus name when they come together let it be potent let it be powerful every time they come together God do it in Jesus name every morning I would get up touch the fallopian tubes touch the cervix uh, touch it father in Jesus name touch where the egg got to go let this time of the month let this egg be fertilized in Jesus name I did that for two years every time my son-in-law would see me I said dude I'm, got, I'm about ready for y'all to go ahead and have this baby because I'm about tired of imagining your reproductive organs every morning in prayer but he said, he said, well, mama, keep on praying because I'm so happy that you're praying for us. And what I did, because we're human, but what I did, my daughter was discouraged. She was despondent. She didn't know what to do. Friends getting pregnant. And she was like, mama, I don't know what the Lord's going to do. Why he, you know, I'm trying to live right. I'm doing the best I can. Why, why, why God doing this to me? Then I say, well, Rachel, I said, sow a seed. I say, sow a seed. So she sowed that seed every month. She sowed that seed. She sowed that seed. And then when she was getting a really a quart low, what I would do, I went to the store like every few to every few months. I would buy I would buy baby clothes. I would buy bibs and I would buy socks and I would buy bottles and I would send her a video. And I was like, when you a little quart low right now, baby girl, I say, know that your daddy and I are in a seating. And this is for you to keep your vision, hallelujah. Uh, fertile keep it keep it before your eyes and don't let it die because this is what your mama have bought already for my grandbaby bibs and t-shirts and all of that we did that for two years so one Thanksgiving, two years later, you know, I got the pop. If, if any woman been pregnant, you can't stand scents, you can't stand fragrances because you want to throw up. So, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I got the candles burning. I got the food of cooking. I got potpourri, all of that. So one of my daughters say, Mama, Rachel over here about to die over here. I said, why? She said, my God, all these fragrances over here. She is about to throw up. I said, why? She said, Rachel is pregnant. I was like, hallelujah. I said, what you say? What? She pregnant? And I started blowing out candles, taking the plug it ends out. I was like, oh, my God. So you mean to tell me the doctor said 2%? But God said 100%. So that means that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous did what? It availed. It availed much. So yeah, we could have stopped. They could have stopped. They could have stopped trying. 
But sometimes I'm quite sure they were a court low. But it's good to have an intercessor in your court. I tell my co-workers, I tell family members, I say sometimes I act crazy. But, but you be good to have me on your team. Because I know what I have. I know what I pack. Call it cocky if you want to. But I know who I am. I know the anointing that I possess on the inside of me. I say, don't y'all talk about me. Because I'm God's favorite. I'm an intercessor. I can make or break this business. Do you not know that? Your company is, should be glad to have you on the team. Because when quota is low, you're the one interceding it back up. When things are not happening, when raises are not happening, when things are going awry, a real intercessor going to say, don't worry about it, we got this. When you come in and, and, and they can't understand why you happy, why you still got happy, why you still got, why you still got joy, because I recognize I ain't make my day. I ain't make my day. Hallelujah. I didn't make my day. So when people say, how you doing? I say, phenomenal. They be like, phenomenal? How you get phenomenal? I said, because I don't already been into the presence of the Lord. I don't already decreed and declared how my day going to go. I don't already sent Judah before me. I don't already told the Lord what I wanted for my day. I don't already declared that I don't care whether it's a phone call. See, sometimes you got to get up in the morning. And you know how sometimes you'll just sit by and take some stuff. But then some days you'll be like, I wish a devil would. Some days you'll be like, try me if you want to. Because some days, sometimes you just be tired of fighting. But some days when you done got up and you done ate your Wheaties and you done anointed yourself with oil and you done shouted. Some mornings I be done shouted in my living room, in my bedroom. I be done decreed and declared. I be done made myself happy. So I get in my car. I say, I wish a devil would. I go to work. I say, I wish a devil would. You know, I'm blowing. I wish a devil would. Anybody come in my path. Oh, you're going to get hands laid on you today. Oh, yeah, the devil going to get cast out today. So when I go to work, they was like, oh, Nita, you are glowing today. What's up with you today? I say, baby, I done been in the presence of the Lord. And can you imagine if we do that on a regular basis? Can you imagine if we do that all the time? Can you imagine if we stay in the presence of the Lord? And I said all that to say, hallelujah. I was praying for my friend. Hallelujah. I was praying for my girlfriend. And she said, Anita, I'm pregnant. And I said, okay. So I was trying to figure out, you know, why she was telling me this. And so she says, um, I married a man so he can get a green card. I said, okay. So he paid me $5,000. Um, he paid me $5,000 so he can be legitimate in the United States. And I said, okay. So she told me all the things that happened with that. So he, she said that, but now um, it, the two years are up or the three years are up. And so now, you know, I can't find him to get out of the marriage. I can't find him. So he's had my life on hold. Yeah, he's, he, um, he paid me, but now, I'm in, a, I'm, I'm in a mental funk. I'm depressed. I'm oppressed. I ain't got no joy. I ain't got no peace. And so now I'm pregnant from another dude. And this guy want to marry me. But I can't marry him because I'm still married to the guy that wanted a green card. So now all my peace is gone. All my joy is gone. What am I going to do? And, and, and then she says, I'm saved. But I feel so bad going in the sanctuary pregnant because all of them looking at me and they're staring at me and they're judging me. And I said, okay. So now I said, well, why were you ashamed to come to me? She said, because you were my coach. You coached me. You had such high hopes for me and you sown into my life and I let you down. And so now she's crying. And so I was like, baby doll, you know, I ain't all of that like that now. But she let me know that she was tired and she wanted to be free. So I said, um, I said, so let me take that off of you. So I say, can I pray for you? I'm going to lay hands on you. So now she's sitting in my car and I'm praying for her. 
what I'm finna say is finna blow your mind. The Lord has never showed this to me before. So I'm praying for her. And I'm decreeing and declaring her peace to come back. Her joy to come back. I say because the devil, that's what I told her. I quoted that scripture in John 10.10. 10. The devil came to steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your happiness. You've been, you've been broken all this time. The devil did. He robbed you. He robbed you. I say, but I take it back in Jesus' name. I take the guilt off you, the shame off you, the bondage off you. You're afraid. I take that off for you. You're lonely. I take that off for you. Now I shield you in the blood of Jesus. Lady Mincy, this is what the Lord came to me and told me to tell her. I acquit you. Never heard that in the days of my life praying for anybody. I said, oh my God. The Lord said that he has acquitted you. Then the Lord told me to tell her, there's jubber jeopardy attached to this. You cannot be tried anymore for this. Tears just begin to roll down her face. I said, because baby girl, the Lord has freed you. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, Miss Anita, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. I can't believe it. I said, I know it. Because all she needed was somebody to reaffirm to her. That's why it pays to have a good intercessor in your corner or a friend that know where they're going or that's got, you know, got themselves together. Because all I did was to tell her, baby girl, it's all right. You're no longer that. The baby is here. Can't do nothing about that. So now let's pray that the Lord, let's, let's call, let's call. You know you, your words have power. So I say, let's call that. And I called him a joker. I said, let's call that joker forth. Because you don't know where he is, but God do. He done hijacked your peace. He done hijacked your joy. He done hijacked your future seemingly. But all you needed was somebody to tell you who you are. So now I pray that God give you hind feet for stability. Oh yeah, she was a little rocky. Hallelujah. The devil was trying to take her peace and take her out. But when she left my presence, her whole countenance literally lifted. And all I told her was what the word said. I didn't give her my opinion. I didn't give her what Anita, Anita say. I gave her what the word say. You're no longer, you're not, you're not a slave to sin. And this is what I told her, Lady Mincy. I say, now, forgive yourself. Because God already forgave her. Jesus already forgave her. So now, when you look in the mirror, you tell yourself, I'm forgiven. Why am I forgiven? I'm forgiven because Jesus already paid the price. See, what we're doing, we're trying to pay a price. We're trying to pay a debt that God already paid. Hallelujah. You ain't got to work for it. The Bible says that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We ain't got to work for it. It's already been paid. So you got to say, my sins have already on the cross. They're already forgiven. God has already set me free. And now what you got to do, you got to be a big girl every morning to say, I don't care how it feel, what it looked like, that I'm delivered in Jesus' name. You got to know that. That's why David, when he came back and Ziglag was burnt with fire, what did he do? He knew what worked for him. So sometimes you got to know what worked for you. Hallelujah. Children gone, house gone, houses burnt with fire, cattle gone, workers gone. Hallelujah. Wives gone, everybody gone. All I want to know when the devil takes something for me, all I want to know is, God, do you want me to go get it back? So what did David say? David said, well, Lord, all this done happened. Shall I pursue? Shall I pursue? All I want to know, I don't care what the devil done took for me, robbed for me, stole from me. All I want to know, God, do you want me to go back and get it? 
So what my daughter was trying to say, mama, my husband have been healed from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but my life haven't stopped, stopped right there. We want another baby. So what the doctor said was 2%, but God said otherwise. So all we wanted to know was God, do you want them to have another baby? Yes. So it took a minute. It took for us to continue to pray day in and day out. Luke 18 said that if I pray day and night, you got to know what the word say about your problem. The scripture said that if I pray day and night, he said that he'll avenge me. How fast? Speedily of my adversary. Because it don't give God pleasure for the devil to be knocking you down all the time. For the devil to bring sickness and disease. You know, have you ever heard people like this say religious? You know what? When when soon you know when the Lord want me to get out of this here, he'll get me out of it. Girl, you gonna stay there. You know, God, you know, God know me and I'm sick, but in his time, and girl, you finna die. But if I am going to die, I'm going to swing while I'm going down. I'm not finna sit here and die. So what? You got a lump in your breast. So what? So what? They diagnose you. So what? That's just an opportunity for the Lord to do some things in your life. The scripture said this, this disease or this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. So we got to be like David when he came back to Ziglag and everything was gone. Sometimes the miracle of the healing has nothing to do with you, but has to do with the people that's going to be looking at you for a testimony. Yeah, God can do it. God didn't have to put you through that. Oh, but the miraculous working hand of God is going to be so prevalent in your life till God want to get the glory. So when God told David to pursue, hallelujah, what did David say? Abiathar, Abiathar, bring me my airpod. Don't get the intercessor started. Because David knew you bring me something that I'm, see, I ain't acquainted with grief and pain and shame and things happening and doors closing and houses being foreclosed and cars being repossessed and jobs this and job that. And we, we had COVID that done upset the entire world for two and a half years. People done died. People are living with the repercussions of what COVID have done. Some businesses have closed. How Houses have been foreclosed on. Some people have not yet gotten back on their feet. But they knew that all I got to do is just weather the storm. All I got to do is just stand on what the word. I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm going to do like Abraham did. 25 years for the promise to come. But this is what Abraham said. Abraham said, I ain't going to stagger. At the promises of God through unbelief I'm fully persuaded I don't care how long it take that the things that God has promised me you got to insert your name if things aren't doing what you want it to do you got to be fully persuaded hallelujah that whatever God promised me he's able to perform I don't care who ain't getting it I don't care what they turn down turn down the loan turn down the grant turn down absolutely everything but it ain't over until God says it's over it ain't over until I get the victory I'm gonna pursue I'm going to go back and I'm going to redeem what God promised me. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm not going to worry about what the world say. I'm not going to worry.
worry about what Uncle Sam say. I'm not going to worry about what the doctor say, what my coworkers say. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I choose to believe God. I choose to trust God. I'm like, I'm like Job. Everything, Job whirlwind. Everything Job had. His children, his she asses, his camels, his servants, his maid and man servants, everything gone. Not in a process of time. In one day. But what did Job say? Job said, naked I came into this world. Naked I'm going to live. Job said like this, I'm just going to wait right here. I'm going to wait right here till my change come. And sometimes you got to tell friends, co-workers, family members, I ain't finna move. I'm going to wait right here till my change come. Because I know this is something else Job said. Though they slay me, they fire me. They lay me off. The doctor gave me a death sentence. The doctor told me 2%. Though they slay me, yet... Yet, baby, you got to have a yet down in your soul. <laughs> and if I ain't got a yet, you better have a friend that's got a yet. Hallelujah. I got, a, I got friends around me that when I tell them things that's going on in my life, they say, girly girl, come on, let's go before the Lord and let's pray. They pull me out of it. I got friends that don't let me stay bound, that don't let me stay depressed. I got friends that don't let me be in a hole. They don't let me do that. Why? Because, girl, girl, you got too much living to do. You got too much peace to give. You got too much joy to give the world. See, the devil know your potential. You just don't know your potential. So my friend done let mess around and, and laid around for all that time with no peace and no joy. And in five minutes, literally, I ain't tooting my horn. God did it. In just a fraction, I, I agreed with her. I pulled her up out of that. I pulled her. I took her grave clothes off. I said, woman, hallelujah, thou art loosed of thine infirmity. I know it sounds cute that T.D. Jakes framed that, but it's in scripture. And some people scared to use it because he done made, a, a, you know, millions of dollars off of saying, woman, thou art loose. But it's in scripture. It's in the scripture. You can utilize that. Woman, thou art loose. Don't allow your friends and family members. Everybody's standing. Don't allow them. To be in your presence. Bound. Because sometimes you both might be going through. But how many of you know where two or three are gathered together? We're in the midst. So if I have to cry my way free, cry your way free. If you have to crawl to the altar, crawl to the altar. But I ain't letting you go. I'm going to be like, ja like Joshua. No, Jacob. I'm not going to let the Lord go until he bless me. You got to know what belongs to you. Don't let go. Hold on. Believe God is true to his word. I didn't care what was going on in the world. I know God was able. Husband died and all of this, but I stood flat footed and say, Lord, I still believe you. Y'all know when things happen in our life, we start blaming God. We start saying, well, God, why you did that? God, I'm a tither, why you took that? God, why, God, why? But not once. I got the testimony like Job. Woman, you sound foolish. You got to tell family and friends. Why would you, sir? I had some people say, I'm mad with God. I said, you is? Why? God took my mama. God took my daughter. God took my husband. I say, girl, you know them some powerful words you're saying? Do you know that God got breath? God is the one that gives you breath. God is the one that formed darkness, create evil. You got to know scripture. I said not once that I formulate in my mind to tell God, I'm mad at you. But you got to be honest. See, you know, the Lord know my nickname. You know, I be like, God, what's up with that? It's your girl Anita. You know, I be born, I be ghetto with God sometimes. Like, oh, what's up with that? You know? 
This me. This your baby girl. I talked to God just like that. So when my husband died, and I said, chair this with Jackie, I would get up and pray every morning at five. But I would get up, got up for months and say, God, I ain't got nothing to say to you. But guess what I didn't do? I ain't tell God I was mad at him. Not once. I wasn't that crazy. But what I did say, I say, God, even though I ain't got nothing to say to you, I had to verbalize this. I ain't mad at you. I'm just broken. I'm hurt that you took my husband of 35 years. So now, I don't know what to say to you. But guess what God told me back? Let you know God know your nickname. Call me my nickname. He said, girl, you ain't got to say nothing. You know why? Because you showed up. And drop the mic right there. God say, if you keep coming to me, because Matthew 11 say, come unto me. Hallelujah. Those that are laboring, those that are in heavy laden, he said that I would give you rest. Say, take my yoke upon me. Hallelujah. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens hallelujah my burdens are light so every day I could come to the Lord I don't care what you're going through painful hurtful going through no peace no joy bruised abandoned all of that but I kept coming Jackie in his presence week by week got stronger and stronger didn't have nothing to say to God but God was reading my heart and I would say but God I'm coming to you because your word told me to so I don't care what you're going through or where you are come and see if the devil can keep you from coming he got you don't ever I don't care if you're in sin. Don't ever stop coming. And that's what the devil do. So what? You sin. Come on, that's why he died. Even if you're a Christian, he died for the sinner. And even if you're saved, he died for your sins. Whatever they are. So that's why people that are saved, they stay so far from God until they get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. They can say you're a hypocrite if you want to, but no, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm running to my father. I'm running to God. Because he said he is Jehovah Shama. He's always there. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. He'll be Psalms 144 for me. He's my Jehovah Gabor. He's going to fight for me. He's my defender. See, if you stop worrying about what the people say, this is an old colloquial saying, they ain't got no heaven, not no hell to put you in. So they judging you. So what? I'm thirsty. I'm panting. I'd rather fall into the hands of a God than to fall into your hand any day because God is going to be a merciful God. He's going to love me back into my right frame of mind. I'm going to run to Jesus. I'm going to take it to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship. Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. So here we are in your presence. We're lifting up holy hands to you. Even if not in the sanctuary, somebody that may be on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, that might be listening to this message that say, you know what? I had given up. I had given up. I threw in the towel. 
You know, I didn't know who I was. The devil, you know, he played me out of pocket. But today I come to restore you. Today I come to acquit you like the Lord told me to tell that sister. You've been acquitted. And one thing about being acquitted, double jeopardy is attached. For that particular thing, the devil can't hold you bondage and hold you hijacked. Not for that any longer. So we thank you today, Father, for who you are. We thank you for loving us enough to die the death of the cross. We thank you for you were wounded for our transgressions, whatever they may be. And so, Father, we come again and say, wash us. Forgive us. Clean us up on the inside. Hallelujah. I'm sorry for my sins. Renew the joy. Renew my joy. Renew my peace. Renew my hope in you. So, Father, we just thank you for those that are gathered together today. Hallelujah. Those that say, you know what? I've been lost and I've been broken and I've been bruised and I've been abandoned seemingly by people, by my job, by my ex, by my mama, my daddy, whatever it may be. But, Father, we come to you today and we ask that you would fix it. We're like David today. Shall we pursue Shall we go back and get our peace back, our joy back, our health back, our wealth back, our children back, our marriage back, our homes back, our jobs back? Hallelujah. Everything that the devil stole from me, I go back and get it. I reclaim it in Jesus' name. Anything that the locust, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, if he took it, I want it back. And the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and I take it by force no longer when I sit by idly and allow the devil to take my peace and my joy. I take it back today by the blood of Jesus. Uh, thank you. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I got my footing back and I know who I am in Christ Jesus. The devil is a liar. So we say let God be exalted. Uh, let the devil be defeated and I got the victory. Turn to your neighbor and say let the devil be a liar and let the devil be defeated but God be exalted because I have the victory amen hallelujah be blessed hallelujah we hope you were blessed by this turn it back over to whoever here at the I am church make sure you share this message with your loved ones remember there are three ways for you to give Number one, website giving. Open your web browser and type in T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G and click on the giving tab. Number two is giving through Cash App. Open the Cash App on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you'd like to give and search the I Am Church and click send and you will get a confirmation. Number three is given through our church app. Go to the I Am Church app and click on the Give tab, and you will be able to give through your church app. Thanks for watching, and we hope you were blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at T I A C J A X and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you have not downloaded your church app, please go download our church app, go to your phone's app store and search The I Am Church and click download. You can also download our church app on your Roku and Apple TV devices. Search The I Am Church and for those who just gave their life to Christ or want to become a member here at the I Am Church, please visit T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G forward slash connect and fill out the connect card. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.